Hi, and welcome to the Sexual Health Alliance Problem Sexual Behavior Certification Training Question and Answer Session. Uh, my name is Heather McPherson, and I'm going to be moderating this question and answer session by the questions that you guys sent in via Gmail um, and on our socials. So uh, we will get started here in a second. There were a lot of questions that came in. We're gonna do our best to answer as many as possible. If you have a question that didn't get answered during this time, please feel free to email us or um, shoot us a, a message anywhere on any platform. We'll make sure to get back with you. So I'm going to pass it to David to introduce himself. Actually, I'm going to ask Michael to introduce himself first. No, um, absolutely. I was going to go by your structure. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm Michael Vigorito. I'm a licensed marriage family therapist, private practice in D.C., I primarily work with men concerned about sexual behavior problems and out of control sexual behavior, both in individual and group. I'm also a uh, consultant uh, working with University of Maryland's Prevention Research Center, where we are training behavioral health providers to integrate LGBTQ affirmative practices, as well as facilitating sexual health conversations with their clients. And Michael, as always, is too modest. Michael is also the uh, co-author of Treating Out of Control Sexual Behavior, Rethinking Sexual Addiction, um, which is an incredibly influential book in this whole uh, dialogue. Um, I couldn't think of a better person to do this training with than Michael, um, who is part of the, uh, the process where we are changing the dialogue about how to work with people who are struggling with their sexuality. Um, I'm David Lay, I'm a psychologist, author of The Myth of Sex, sex Addiction, um, and, and, and basically a longtime gadfly in this dialogue. For years I've been asked, okay, David, if you don't believe in sex addiction, then what do you believe in? What, what are the appropriate treatment modalities to use with people who come to us who are struggling with their sexuality? So after 10 years of that question being asked, I got tired and um, finally gave in and said, okay, let's do it. Um, with the Sexual Health Alliance and with Michael Vigorito, we uh, embarked on this on this journey and we really invite you guys to join us in this journey in figuring out what are the right strategies um you know in, in the question and answer period today we want to wrestle with um the questions that you guys are asking about where does this go but but i want to say first and foremost, that the goal of the problem sexual behavior certification is not to teach you to know the right answer. Instead, it's to teach you to ask the right questions. We wanna invite you to be curious. And, 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 and I wanna be clear, I learned that from Michael. Um, being curious about our patients' experiences, being curious about the things that they bring to the table that they are struggling with sexually is how we learn to help them. Going through this program, going through problem sexual behavior training is not about knowing the answer. It's about knowing that our job is to connect with this person overall, to be curious about how things work for them, and then to explore ways that those connections happen. Um, I'm looking forward to all the questions. I'm looking forward to this training because I'm really excited to learn from um, our participants, to learn from Michael, to learn from Heather. That's how we all move forward in this together. And, and that ultimately is the thing that I've struggled with um, for years in whether it's sex addiction or compulsive sexual behavior, whatever damn label we wanna wrestle with here. I'm tired of people who think they have all the answers when all I've got is questions. I want to explore those questions with you together. Heather, I think we've got a bunch of questions today. 
Yeah. I mean, I, I want to reiterate that. I think you, you said and learn from me and I was like, no, no, not learn from me because you guys are the people that I've been learning from for the last decade. And um, you guys have a wealth of knowledge. And I think that obviously the collective group will also bring a wealth of knowledge uh, to this program. So uh, we're really excited about it. Some of the questions to start with were just logistical questions. So this program is a gentler, more holistic and evidence-based alternative to becoming a sex addiction professional. Uh, we include uh, all therapists and sex therapists interested in helping people who are concerned about sexual behavior problems or identify as sexually addicted or compulsive. Um, so one of the questions was, when does this program start? It starts November 9th. 2021. So just in a couple of weeks. Um, and if you are not, you know, we say on the website, if you are not already in our certification program, uh, just shoot us an email, let us know who you are, and uh, we'll get you registered right away. We just want to um, meet first with you and, and uh, make sure that you're going to be a good fit for the program, not meet physically or online, just, um, just through email and just uh, see who you are and, and invite you to join the program. Uh, if you're a general therapist or maybe even not a therapist, uh, maybe you're a coach or educator, but you really want to learn this information, that's where we ask you to just email us and let us know who you are and what you're interested in, and then we'll invite you to join the program. And, and I want to be clear, you know, this program is not about reprogramming or arguing or debating about the, you know, whether sex addiction is real or not, whether that's the right answer or not. I think we're at the point where we want to move beyond that. We want to, we want to explore how can you as a, as a professional help the people that are coming to you seeking help. And um, labels don't help anybody. We want, we want to help you again to be curious and ask the right questions. And that brings us to our next question. How is this different from a traditional sex addiction treatment training program? Mm -hmm. Michael, I'd love to hear your answer. To that. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, well, I would uh, piggybacking on what uh, David was saying. One of the things I was excited about this program this, this is not just going to be about how David uh, treats this issue or about how I treat this issue. We are hoping to elevate all of the experts that we have come across uh, in the field to talk about their particular areas. So we're, we're excited about providing a platform for a variety of voices. So that I think that speaks to the difference between what we're trying to do and the sex addiction treatment uh, certification program, right? It's not just one singular overriding definition of what's been going on with this client. Uh, it's not a specific task oriented approach. We want to be able to help the students think critically about the issues that are presenting to them when someone is coming in saying that I feel like I'm a sex addict or I think being impulsive or I feel out of control. We want to give you the tools to think critically about what uh, is going on to evaluate the narratives that the clients have and then to be able to develop a treatment plan that's going to best help them achieve their goals, their vision of sexual health, what they're trying to achieve uh, through therapy. Yeah, if I had my way, the certificates would say that you're now certified in critical thinking about sexual behavior problems. Um, one of the big problems I've had with, you know, all of the sexual behavior um, programs and approaches before are that they are incredibly personality driven. Um, uh, guru driven is, is also a term. And this is not the David Lay model. This is not the Michael Vigorito model. It's not the Heather McPherson model. It is the evidence-based best practice model at this moment. Um, and I think that's incredibly valuable because unfortunately, I think that the you know past models have failed on the fact that each of them is driven by, you know, a, a, a cult of personality who want to be right. Michael and I don't want to be right. We want to help the people that are coming to us seeking, seeking support. And my right answer today might change tomorrow if more research comes out that says, hey, the idea I had yesterday was wrong. 
I'm willing to change on that, and Michael is too. Um, we want to help you think critically um, about these questions so that you can make those decisions yourself. One of the next questions we received was, I'm already a student in the Shaw program, or maybe I attended the October conference with Michael Vigorita, or maybe I've attended a year-long program with someone else on OCSB or rethinking sex addiction. How will this program be different? What will I learn? Okay. Well, I can probably zero in on the October one since that just happened. Uh, the October- It is still October. Yeah, no, it is. It's true. Uh, the October training is, is just a, a weekend long training that was based on the protocol that I uh, published in uh, Treating Out of Control Sexual Behavior uh, that was co-developed with Doug Von Harvey. That training was specifically around kind of how I think about this issue. And it was also focused on providing group therapy for people who feel out of control. So the first day were kind of uh, you know, foundations of the approach uh, some, uh, some theory, uh, some ethical concerns and talking about the sexual principles. And then the second day was all about group therapy. The problem sexual behavior training program is not just going to be my voice. Uh, and it's not going to be, uh, specifically around group psychotherapy. It's going to be around a variety of approaches. So I think there's going to be some, uh, similarities because my voice is obviously going to be in, uh, this training program as well but it's hopefully going to be uh, married with the other uh, experts that we're going to be bringing in. Uh, each month has a different topic that we're gonna drill down and talk a little bit more uh, specifically. I uh, didn't really have that time in the weekend training, so I'm also excited about being able to take one topic, explore it, understand it, apply it to uh, the folks that are coming in for, for treatment around this issue. And there are some things that are outside of the OCSB model that wouldn't be included. Uh, for instance, we're going to be looking at issues around non-consensual sex, which is a rule out uh, for the OCSB model. Um, we're going to take a deeper dive into neuroscience. Me not being a neuroscientist, it's not something I necessarily cover in much depth. Uh, so there's definitely going to be some things that I did not cover or uh, are not addressed in treating out of control sexual behavior. Michael, your voice is definitely in my head with all of those issues. <laughs> um, I think the, yeah, I mean, I, I, I couldn't say it any better than Michael. I'm, the, the goal of this program, I think, is to invite our participants to acknowledge that one size does not fit all and that there are folks who come for treatment where this model is not appropriate, but this model is, this strategy is effective, and this model isn't. Um, the, the OCSB model, I'm a huge fan, um, but as Michael knows, I think that from the beginning, I've said, well, you know, but there are these folks that I think are missing. Um, how do we support those folks? Um, whether it's individuals that are experiencing moral incongruence and religious conflict, um, uh, folks where group therapy isn't appropriate, um, all of those issues are, 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 I think, the goals that or the strategies, the questions that we want to invite folks to wrestle with. Um, there is so much controversy about all of these issues um, at, a, at, at a public level that we want participants to be able to go into those dialogues recognizing that one definition, one explanation, one treatment um, isn't right for the complexity of the issues that people experience around these problems. Um, so we as clinicians have to be equally sophisticated. I also want to add something that David mentioned uh, earlier around some of the kind of guru specific uh, or guru centered uh, approaches that are also out there that I, I did not want to create a certification program in out of control sexual behavior or Michael Vigorito's out of control sexual behavior model. Uh, to me, that was that it was, would be too idiosyncratic and would put me at the center of that, which I do not want. Uh, I like to take the approach of I'm here to share how I think about this and how I work and how now I want to share how other people think and how other people work in this issue. 
Uh, so I think you'll see some differences uh, uh, between what I talked about in that October training and what we're putting together uh, for the certification program. Well said. Thank, thank you to the, you both. Um, the other question centered around, we will be meeting monthly uh, mm -hmm. live. What will those meetings look like and what happens if the student misses them? Uh, they get spanked publicly on video. <laughs> we will post that repeatedly. Um, no. <laughs> uh, if there's more than one person who gets spanked, we're going to have to travel remotely um, to, to encourage that spanking to happen. Um, yeah, David, David doesn't usually recommend shaming when it comes <laughs> yeah, exactly. to psychotherapy. Hey, spanking but is he's shame. fine with shaming when it comes to it. <laughs> that sounds so, like so a, that's, that's the divide that David has. Wait a second. Wait a second. That's a reward, isn't it? David? <laughs> We're encouraging people not to come yeah. now. What, what the heck? That's fair. We're threatening people with a good time. David. Exactly. So in those in those monthly meetings, we're going to be having basically some more live discussion. The goal of those monthly meetings is that you know Michael and I are going to be presenting some additional kind of follow up information to the webinar and the topic at hand, but then we're also going to be engaging in some. Uh, live discussion of those issues with participants up to and including some actual case discussion, whether it is cases that I've worked with, Michael's worked with, or folks that are in the group presenting them. Um, so the goal is to take that information and now integrate it in a more active kind of live kind of, kind of, kind of model. If you can't participate, if you can't make it that day, that's okay. We're not gonna we're not gonna fly out and publicly spank you, but you will be able to watch that video and um, and engage with that material um, uh, as we go. Um, you're not gonna miss out. You're not gonna be left behind. Um, and then the next session, hopefully, if you have questions that are lingering, you're gonna be able to engage with us. Um, you know the again, what we're trying to develop here is a community, a dialogue, a relationship, and an engagement around how we all work together with these issues. So if you have a question after that session that you didn't get to, didn't get to ask, Michael and I are not going to ignore you if you send us an email and say, well, what about? We're gonna to talk to you because we want you to be the most effective clinician that you can be supporting the uh, the folks that are struggling with these issues that's how we think um uh, we make all of this better so the next question is what if i'm a beginner or what if i'm seasoned and i've been in the field for over a decade um can i still take this program and what kind of information will i be able to apply uh from this program mm. well i think that's what i like about the flexibility of those in person meetings, because we can help address folks depending on their developmental level and uh, experience in the field. So we're hoping to create a space that's flexible enough for people, for us to be able to meet people where they are, their level of skill and experience, uh, and help bridge some of this information to the work they're already doing. Yeah, and you know, I'm gonna be, an, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm a beginner every time I meet a new patient because I'm a beginner in terms of trying to understand them, the issues that are going on in their life, um, trying to figure out how to connect with them and to uh, develop the interventions that are gonna be effective. Um, I, uh, you know, as Michael said, I mean, the, the guru kind of model is based on this strategy of, I know the answer. I can look inside your brain. I can look inside your life and I can tell you what you need to do. But I've never been that confident. And I don't think it helps for us to be confident. Instead, that curiosity comes from approaching every, every therapeutic relationship as a beginner. And how do I learn about how to help you? Um, so I don't think it matters whether you're a beginner or seasoned. 
if you can engage with us in developing that curiosity. Okay, so I'm going to take it back. I want to give people a certification in curiosity around this. Um, because I, you know, more and more and more, I think that Michael frames it so well when he says that's what makes a difference as we work with patients. Absolutely. So the next question is kind of centered just around what does all of this include? Um, it's a year long program and uh, we have an online platform. It's a learning platform, it's specialized and pace accessible. So you do it at your own pace. You go through the modules at your own pace. Uh, and there's lots of research and articles and assignments and case studies in there. Uh, and then we also have monthly special topic recorded webinars with expert guests. So 12 of those plus interviews from the field. And I have to say, we have some absolutely incredible special guests and incredible interviews. I mean, these are all from the people that are at the top of their game, uh, top of, of the world in terms of this specific, uh, this specific topic. So can you guys just kind of explain a little bit about those special guests and those interviews that we have done, um, because I'm really excited about that too, because it's not just, you know, David and Michael, which are incredible and they're leading this program, but we have also just so many people contributing to it in a meaningful and powerful way that I want to acknowledge. Yeah, we're going to drown you in, in, in research readings. Um, and not just uh, current research readings, but things that are coming out tomorrow. Um, the, the goal again is to teach you to think critically and that involves being able and willing to explore where the field is going and where new research is, is happening. Um, in addition to that, you know, Heather's right. I mean, we're bringing in rock stars, um, whether it's Josh Grubbs, Nikki Prousey, Charles Salmonow, <clears throat> Shane Krause, um, uh, Cameron Staley. I, I, I mean, the level of thought and experience that you're going to experience here um, is second to none. I, 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 I've been in this for a little while, and I can tell you that nowhere are you going to be exposed to as many potential um, thought leaders as in this program who are intending to not teach you to think like them, but to teach you to think critically about where this is going. Um, that I think is the absolute unique thing about this, uh, about this program. And I, I just wanna say we have people that aren't even on the website yet <laughs> so you can kind of go to the website and see who our special guests are going to be so far but there's so many incredible people that we haven't even gotten up there yet <laughs> that are to come so please keep checking and let us know if you have any specific questions about that but the level of um knowledge and wisdom that we're bringing into this program that, you know, with you guys, with your connections, you know, which we're so fortunate to have, um, is really, really top notch. And I couldn't be more um, excited for it. Uh, some of the other questions were just around some logistics in terms of cost. So the program includes 125 ASEC CEs, and you can either pay um, all in one lump sum, one time payment, or you can have it spread out over a 12 month payment plan. Um, and then in each of those options, you can include ASEC-CEs or without ASEC-CEs. Um, so know that uh, even if you include, even if you make a payment, one time payment or payment plan without ASEC-CEs, you'll still get access to everything else. You'll have everything else included except ASEC-CEs into your program. And that's because there's plenty of uh, professionals that don't need ASEC-CEs. Maybe they don't want to get certified or maybe they have too many. I know our students get more than enough and you don't need them until you renew years later. And so we wanted to give that price flexibility um, and tuition flexibility so that uh, you can choose what works best for you. 
and regardless of, of CEs and credits, I know that stuff's important. God knows I have to keep track of myself. But over the past few years, I mean, I've really just been honored by the fact that folks that have been trained in other models reach out to me and say, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to hear some other ways to approach these issues. And as clinicians, I think we all need to be moving forward. Um, and this is part of moving forward. As society is moving forward um, with attitudes toward sexuality and sexual diversity, we as clinicians need to move forward too. This is your opportunity to do that. Another question that we've gotten is um, the at your own pace <laughs> question, right? It's a 12 month long program, uh, meaning that we have monthly lives with both of you, as well as recorded webinars that will be dropped live every month um, that you can watch later. You can also watch the monthly lives that we record with you guys later. Um, and then everything in the modules uh, will also be at your own pace. You can do it whenever you want. You can do it in baby chunks and big chunks. Um, you can do it all within a couple of months, or you can do it all at the very end of the program. Um, we recommend obviously doing it a little bit of chunk at a time. That's why we're dropping the lives and some of the modules as we go. Um, and at the end of the 12 months, we will give you a couple of months to finish out the program. If you get behind, we we know that sometimes that happens, life happens. So if you get behind, you'll have a little bit of time to catch up. So don't worry about that. You can always email us and ask us for an extension too. We've done that with some of our other specialized certification programs. So please just know that we'll work with you, but we do want to make it accessible to you. We do want to make it in bite-sized chunks so that you don't feel mm -hmm. overwhelmed each month. And uh, typically that's worked really well. Yeah, we know there are different kinds of learners. Um, and if your goal is to figure out how to integrate this material into the work that you do with people, we're going to work with you. We have the same goal. Absolutely. Any other last words um, of this Q&A, maybe questions that you've gotten or anything else that you want to say? I mean, the primary thing I want to say is how excited I am about this program, uh, that I'm looking forward to meeting professionals who are interested in kind of an expansive view on this issue. Uh, I mean, I find the people who are interested in this topic to be uh, uh, fun and are, um, I think, I'm trying to say, like, I was going to use the word brave, but I, feel, I don't know if that's too hyperbolic, but because I still think talking about sex uh, is challenging and people need some courage to be able to do that with their with their clients. They might not have gotten the uh, preparation or education in uh, their formal education. It's still something that's stigmatized. Therapists aren't necessarily comfortable about this. So to acknowledge that this is a growing edge and then taking action to, to um, correct that or to expand in that area, I think uh, is something to be excited about. And I usually have a great time with those folks. So I am super, super excited about meeting you all and uh, spending the year with you. Yeah, like Michael, I, I'm excited about learning from you. Um, I'm excited about hearing the issues that are not being captured currently um, so that we can think critically together about how to help people develop healthy ways to approach these issues um, with us saying it's not it, it, you know it's not about what you do it's about how you do it how can we help therapists to teach their patients or work with their patients to figure out how to how to integrate sexuality in a healthy way not just today but tomorrow and in 10 years and in 20 years um, that's the work i'm really excited about being part of I'll say two more things about mm -hmm. this program and then we'll wrap it up. <laughs> um, one is that this program, I'm so excited for how many different perspectives that we have. And that also comes with how many different models, treatment models, um, programs that we're incorporating into 
uh, this training program because there isn't just one model. There's a lot of different perspectives in terms of how to treat problem sexual behavior and to hear a diversity of voices and perspectives in this common issue that we as clinicians and all different types of professional space is so critical. And so I'm really excited to hear all of those different perspectives and seeing what will fit with certain clients that I might have. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say is that, you know, no matter where you are in the world, know that you belong <laughs> to this program. Um, with the Sexual Health Alliance, we've had students from all over, including Australia, Japan, Germany, UK, Norway, <laughs> India. Um, we've had people all over in all of our different certification programs. So please know that even even if you're in some tiny country on the whole other side of the world, that's why it's all online. That's why it's all recorded. You can watch it anytime. You can go at your own pace. We wanted it to be accessible to everyone. So we welcome you with the Sexual Health Alliance Problem Sexual Behavior Certification Training Program. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much to both of you for being here and answering some of these questions. And if you have any more questions that you didn't get answered, please email us at shawcertifications at gmail.com or through the website sexualhealthalliance.com. Thank you, Heather.